One of my patients said to me, I'm not afraid of dying, he said, I'm more afraid of living. Again, I'm not an advocate for the massive and I think horrendously overdone use of medications, but I can tell you that the first time I took antidepressant, after a few days I said, you mean people can feel like this normally? Allow life to come to you. You don't have to force it. And uh, open your heart. Don't, don't just focus on your clever brain so much. You know, open your heart and see what possibilities reveal themselves to you. And that it's not your fault. The way the world is, and even the way you are, it's not your fault. It's not a fault. Just accept yourself. I'll, t I'll tell you two things. Um, one is I had an aunt who was a physician herself, and she had not wanted to be a doctor, she wanted to be a writer. But complying with her father's wishes, she went to medical school. And she was taken to Auschwitz, where he saw, she saw her parents taken in one direction, to the gas chambers, and she was sent in another. And very sensitive, very wounded soul. But she saw me much more clearly when I was young than I could see myself. And once she quoted Shakespeare to me, and I know it's a cliche, and I know that it's in uh, the mouth of the character, Polonius, in whom Shakespeare puts this phrase, it's even hypocrisy, but it's so true. She wrote to me, to thine own self be true. I wish I had understood what that meant, but that's the best advice I got. And then when I was a physician, but the part of me that wanted to write had really expressed himself. Because that was really in me to write and to share something with the world. And I had a patient who used to be an English professor at the University of British Columbia. He was quite a well-known Canadian poet, Warren Tallman. And I said to him when he came to the office once for a medical visit, I said, Warren, I, I want to write, but I don't know what. And he said, don't worry about it. You will write when you have something to teach the world. And that's what happened. Because parents are so stressed. And sensitive kids pick up on that stress. They don't know what to do with it. They tune out as, as small children when their brains are developing. It's not a genetic disease. It's an adaptive response. The problem with adaptive responses is they help you at the time, but later on they become problems. In other words, adaptive at one point, maladaptive at another point. Again, the problem is that they're not conscious adaptations. You have to believe in your own truth, and you have to deepen your relationship to your truth. And uh, you'll connect with people that are also seeking the same truth as you are, even if they don't see it the way you do. So never be afraid of your own truth um, and to explore it. Also, don't be afraid to let go of it if you find that there's a deeper truth that um, speaks to you. And at the same time, Whatever you do out there in the world, do an equal amount of work internally. Because if you don't, your work in the world will not be as effective. If the success of a doctor is to be measured by how long his patients live, then I'm a failure because my patients die very young, relatively speaking. They die of HIV, they die of hepatitis C, they die of infections of their heart valves, they die of infections of their brains, of their spine, of their hearts of their bloodstream, they die of suicide, of overdose, of violence, of accidental deaths. And if you look at them, you, you call to mind the words of the great Egyptian novelist Naguib Mahfouz, who wrote, nothing records the effects of a sad life as graphically as the human body, because these people lose everything. They lose their health, they lose their beauty, they lose their wealth, they lose human relationship, and in the end, they often lose their lives. And yet nothing shakes them from their addiction. Nothing can force them to give up their addiction. The addictions are powerful. And the question we have to ask is, why are people afraid of life? And if you want to understand addiction, you can't look at what's wrong with the addiction. You have to look at what's right about it. In other words, what is the person getting from the addiction? What are they getting that otherwise they don't have? And what addicts get, are relief from us, from pain. What they get is a sense of peace, a sense of control, 
a sense of calmness very, very temporarily. And the question is, why are these qualities missing from their lives? What happened to them? Now, if you look at the drugs like heroin, like morphine, like codeine, um, if you look at uh, cocaine, if you look at alcohol, these are all painkillers. One way or another, they all soothe pain. And that's what the real question in addiction is not why the addiction, but why the pain. If my value depends on how much I'm helping others, it becomes addictive. And the reason it becomes addictive is because there's always a niggling doubt inside, which is maybe unconscious, but says, okay, they want me, but do they want me or do they want what I'm giving them? So that, that satisfaction of getting that praise and valuation from the outside is a temporary hit, like mm -hmm. somebody's temporary hit from heroin. Yeah. And then you have to have it again and again and again. Our culture rewards that kind of addiction big time, values it and, 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 and esteems it. Meanwhile, the soul is being ground to dust inside. I ask people, well, if you've been to a cardiologist or a respirologist or a oncologist or a dermatologist or a neurologist, any kind of anologist <laughs> in the last five years, just raise your hands. So, you know, out of a 500 people in a room, half of them at least will put their hands up, sure. maybe more. And then I'll say, now keep your hands up if they ask you about any childhood trauma, your current relationship, any stresses at work, how do you feel about yourself as a human being? The hands mostly go down. Yeah. And yet, yet I say to people, and I say this with full scientific backing, that those questions that are not being asked are what drove you to that doctor in the first place. Whether that trauma manifested in chronic physical illness or, or, or mental health conditions or uh, addictions, that's the source. And unless you deal with that source, you're only dealing with symptomatology mm -hmm. and not actual cause. All trauma is stressful, but not every stress is traumatic. So sometimes people use the word to refer to difficult experiences, which is not the same as being traumatized. And on the other hand, where it really matters, which is in the area of health that you and I are both concerned in, whether it's physical or mental health, trauma is not understood nearly enough or used nearly enough. So that, to my mind, a lot of conditions of mind and body are actually very much trauma-related without the healing profession, particularly the medical profession, actually recognizing it. So trauma then is, it comes from the Greek word for wounding. Trauma is a wound. It's a psychic wound that leaves a scar, it leaves a, an imprint in your nervous system, in your body, in your psyche, and then shows up in multiple ways that are not helpful to you later on. So in its, in its basic sense, trauma is a psychic wound. And if you look at the nature of a wound, um, on the one hand, if it's raw and open, it really hurts. So when somebody touches that wound that you sustained a long time ago, but it hasn't healed yet, you'll react like you're just being tormented all over again. This happens in relationships all the time. On the other hand, uh, wounds scar over, and the scar tissue has certain features. It's very hard, it's rigid, so it's not flexible. So people tend to be rigid when they're traumatized. It also doesn't grow. So trauma very often stops emotional growth and development. So on the one hand, it's very raw and painful. On the other hand, it even lacks sensation because scar tissue doesn't have nerve endings in it. So trauma then, just to finish, is not what happened to you. So trauma is not the difficult incidents, like trauma is not the war. It's not the, in my case, the Second World War when I was born or what happened to me. Trauma is not the abuse that people experience. Trauma is not the pain that they felt. Trauma is the wound that they sustained as a result. If trauma is the wound that we sustained, it can be healed at any time. It'll, it'll never not have happened. But if the wound is what happened to people inside as a result, that can be healed.